I am Pastor Ryan, Mr. C, and man, I like that. That's a nice ring to it. I, I agree. Mr. C, sounds strong. Pastor R. Yeah, let's let's not. Doctor R. Okay, I mean, I guess that's never been used before. No, nobody's ever been called Doctor R before. Yeah, Doctor R. Let's go with that. Doctor like R and Mr. C. All right, well, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about fear. We're going to be talking about fear, and uh, you know, all of us have fears, but. Today, Mr. C and I are going to be doing a challenge. Wait a second. I like that. Can you say that again? <laughs> Mr. C yeah, and I <laughs> are going to be doing a challenge. So it's challenge time. I think we need a little like, like jingle. A jingle? Yeah. yeah, a little jingle. So Why don't you, you start <clears throat> off and I'll join in. Backup? I'll be All the right, backup. You'll be back up? Okay. okay. Challenge time. So what we're doing today for our challenge is, can you name that fear? So in today's challenge, we're going to be guessing what fear each word describes. Okay, play along with us at home. There's going to be some choices and we're going to go Mr. Koblenz versus myself and comment below what you think the loser should have to do. Shave their beard. Shave their beard. Yeah, I do that every morning. So, yeah, yeah, that's not gonna work. Let's I go mean, with that one. <laughs> plus I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lose. So that's not really anything on the He's line. He's going down. Okay, so the first one we have is blenophobia. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think I've ever heard of blenophobia. But the three choices are fear of slime, fear of blenders, and fear of balloons. This is hard. This is hard. Maybe for you, this one's easy for me. Okay. Well, I'm gonna say. Because there's two B's, those are just to throw you off. I'm gonna go with slime. I should be sharing the strategy. Let's see. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Balloon! Blender. Balloon. Balloon. Of course, it's gonna be one of the. You B's. said you were picking slime. I, I lied. <laughs> Also, not a good thing to do, children. Isn't that like no. a commandment? Yeah, but it's, of course it's going to be one of the bees. It's blenophobia. Blenders? Why blender? Uh, bleno, blender phobia? Doesn't it make sense? I mean, yeah, I guess. Well, let's see what the answer is. Right. The answer is slime. What? Who names these things? Oh, my word. Well, we're starting it off with a big zero to zero, nada to nada, somnophobia. Fear of dreams, fear of sleep, and fear of not sleeping. You know, I read it and I thought it was going to be easy because I was like, "Son, it has something to do with sleeping." But yeah. all three choices have to do with sleeping. sleeping. So this one's a good one. This is a good one. Fear of dreams, fear of sleep, or fear of not sleeping. Cue the thinking music. Thinking music. Okay. 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 Do, 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 do. Three, two, one. Boom. Not sleeping. Fear of sleep. Fear of not sleeping. Somna, sleep, phobia, fear, fear of sleep. Well, people who have insomnia can't sleep, right? All right, we'll see, we'll see. All right, All survey right. says. Fear of sleep. Oh. Did you hear that? It was a crowd cheering. <laughs> I hear nothing. I hear nothing. Prepare to shave your beard. No, I, I, <laughs> I'm coming back, Mr. C. All right, the next one is astrophobia. That's an interesting one. Astronauts. Fear of astronauts, that could be. Could be. Here's our choices, fear of thunder and lightning. Is that like the fear of Thor? Basically fear of me. Yeah, no doubt. Boom! Oh yeah, and where's the lightning? Boom! That's good. You might need to zoom in a little, but. Um, fear of thunder and lightning, fear of asteroids. <laughs> All right, so my guess it has stuff to do with like the sky or the, you know, astro. Yeah, that makes sense because oh. thunder, lightning, <laughs> asteroids, and sunsets are all in the sky. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's Good go. Good deduction. Go. All right, Three, ready? Three, two, one, thunder and lightning. Sunset. That's a good sunset. I think so. I've been drawing these since I, I was in like second grade. It kind of looks more like a sunrise though, I must admit. Anyways, what's the difference? If it's in the east or the west. I mean, 
It seems too happy to be doing sunset. I drew it in the west. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Okay. All right. We'll see. Survey it says is thunder and lightning. What? One to one. Take it. All right. All right. Too much yelling. Master Dylan doesn't like the yelling, but I too get shady. excited. You know, you know what? When I uh. That one got me. I'm winning. All right. The next one is zoophobia. Ooh. Choices. Fear of humans. Humans. Fear of zoos. Hmm. Fear of animals. Fear just all animals. In general. Anything. Could be a cat, could be a mountain lion. Any just Or even like, I don't know, a mouse. A mouse. Yeah, I'll yeah. be Sorry. Alright, let's see. I got this. I got this. I got this one as well. Alright. Three, two, one, animals! Zoos. It's in the name. No, that's uh, that's too obvious. Well, why would they name it Zoophobia? If why it do you think zoos, zoos are called zoos? Because they have animals. animals. They also have humans sometimes. Yeah. But we'll we'll see. Well, not right now. Fear of animals. Take it. What? Two to zip. Two to zip. No, actually, you have one. Not bad. <laughs> I did lose my marker, but I got an extra one. Where, where did you get that <laughs> extra marker? That was that was good. All right, pyrophobia. Mm. Um, Fear of fireworks, fear of fire, or fear of fire hydrants. Any mark? You set? Go! Fireworks. Fire. Alright, I'm a little bit nervous of this one. But, I'm, I'm sticking with my answer. Fireworks. Let's see. Fire. Yes! Alright. Tied up. Two to two. Tie ball game. This, uh, this next question is going to be our tiebreaker. Last question. Pediophobia. It's a petty fear. It's a petty Or is it pediophobia? Pediophobia? I think it's pedio. Pedio. Like or is it fear pedio? like pediatrics? Could be. Is it the fear of children, fear of creepers, or fear of dolls? <laughs> fear of creepers. <laughs> <laughs> Set. Go! Children! Dolls. Dolls? Yeah. This is obviously children. And what? <laughs> And Mr. C with the win. Pediophobia apparently is a fear of. I thought that was so obvious. That is the creepiest doll. That is a creepy seen. looking doll. All right. Well, we're gonna get into our Bible verse now, and our Bible verse for the day is we're looking at part of Psalm 56, verse three. What time I am afraid, I will trust in Thee. Um, can you say it with me? Everybody, say it with me. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And, uh, you know, honestly, all of us have fear sometimes. And, you know, hopefully you don't have an irrational fear of dolls. But if you do, nothing against you. All right? But we all have fears. And the Bible tells us what time we're afraid we're supposed to trust in him. Now, I know I've been scared before. Mr. Coleman, can you tell us about a time maybe that you've been scared? Hmm. There was this one time. That I was afraid. <clears throat> we were driving in like a mid '90s Buick LeSabre. Okay, that's it, scary. It's a beautiful car. Oh, okay. It's got that 3800 engine. It just mm, there's something Who about was driving? that. I was oh, scary. All right. Now normally you think that's not scary. You drive like a grandpa. But on this particular occasion, um, I was cruising along at about 64 miles per hour on this desert road in the middle of nowhere. I mean, they are wide open. They're it, begging you to drive faster. Yeah, exactly. There's no one around. So I was really pushing the envelope on, on the, the gas pedal there for sure. So we're, we're cruising along and having a good time. I've got my friend Matt Lozano next to me, um, and then his wife, and then another girl that was on our extension team, one of our friends, Krista. And we're just flying along at 64 knots. <laughs> Actually, the boat, that would be really bad. <laughs> that would be very bad. <laughs> that would be crazy. Anyways, we're flying along, and I see this sign off to the side, okay? Yellow sign. It's got like a road on it. And then it's got... Oh, like, no. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I've, I think I've been on this spot on this yeah. road. Yes, this is bad. Pavement ends. Oh, yes. Oh, no. And uh -huh. I remember, I thought, man, I wonder if I missed my turn. And right about that moment, oh. all right, about 200 yards later, okay, at 64 miles per hour, all of a sudden this Buick LeSabre starts to go, oh, oh. Even though it was the Buick LeSabre and it's got great shocks. Oh. Um, it just didn't feel safe. And so finally, we somehow, I think we'll find out in heaven, 
we are miraculously preserved and the car stops and like the dust, right? It's a desert. It's like settling around me. Um, and I exclaimed something uh, to the effect of, What in the world just happened? And Matt next to me says, Cody, get out of the car. <laughs> We get out of the car, we look at it, and I like destroyed the front end of it, and uh, let's just say he continued driving that day, but I, I was scared. Definitely a scary moment, but you know what? What we're talking about today is that in those scary moments, when things happen in life that scare us, we need to trust God. Right now, a lot of people are scared. Yeah. Let's just be honest, a lot of people are scared. We don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, uh, the government has shut down a whole bunch of what's going on, and especially as kids, you don't know exactly, well, why do I have to stay home? What are people not telling me? It can be easy to get scared. But what God says, what time you're afraid, trust in Him. Trust in God. You know what? We all get scared sometimes. There's nothing wrong with admitting that. Admitting that you have fears. Even grown men have fears sometimes. We, we all do. Um, but what is it that you're gonna do when those fears come along? I love what <clears throat> Pastor Howell said uh, on Sunday, this last Sunday, or it might've been Wednesday night, that you can let, fears can come through your mind, but you cannot let them park in your mind. There's there, and, and you may have a fear come through your mind, but don't let that fear park inside your mind. Instead, go to God. And there's two different things we need to do when it comes to trusting God. We need to give our fear over to Him. In 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And now when I hear of this, I think of my puppy. Her name's Bailey. And uh, she has pretty much stolen my heart. I love Bailey. But when she was little, she would get scared a lot. She still gets, gets scared some, but she tries to act tough. When she was little, she would get scared. And Miley, the proposed dog next door, would run out. And every time Miley would run towards her, she would come and hide between my legs. Like it was the cutest thing ever. She'd come down here between my legs and she'd like huddle in there. And once she was between my legs, then she'd have the confidence to bark a little bit. You know, to, to bark back at Miley and be like, hey, come at me, try it. And <clears throat> she was scared, but once she was beneath me, once she was being protected by me, that fear melted away. And in the same way, we need to put our trust in God. Emotionally, we need to give everything, every care that you have, everything you're worried about. Well, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen? Take it all and give it to God. Give it to Him, and, and He will take care of you. Romans 8 31 says, If God be for us, who can be against us? And just like how my little puppy didn't think that anybody could hurt her when she was hiding beneath my legs, the truth is, nothing can hurt us when we're hiding in the arms of God. If we're on God's side, nobody can be against us. So first we have to give all of our fears up to God. But there's a second part to trust it, and that's obedience. If you're not obeying what God wants you to do, you're not really trusting him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. We have to put our trust in him actively. I think of a, a kid that's learning to swim, a, a younger child. Maybe you guys have a younger sibling that you've watched learn how to swim. And I even remember when I was a kid learning how to swim, my dad would be standing in the pool. And he'd be like, come on, Ryan, jump in the pool. It's going to be okay. Trust me. And he says, Ryan, trust me. And at that moment, if I had turned around and walked away, would I be trusting my dad? No, that would not be trust. Trust is when I say, okay, dad, I'm going to jump in the pool, even though I have no idea to do how to swim, maybe three, four years old, not know what's going to go on. You got those little floaties on your arm, you know, and I'm scared, <clears throat> I, I, but I jumped in the pool anyways. Why? Because I trusted my dad. And in the same way, sometimes we say, well, I trust God's going to take care of me. And then we ignore what it is he wants us to do in that situation. And we try to solve it in our own way. But God says, trust me, not just with your emotions, with how you're feeling, but trust me by actively obeying me. What time you're afraid. When you start to get scared, don't waver from what it is God wants you to do in your life. When you start to get scared about what's going to happen next, continue to obey. Continue to be in your Bible reading every day. You just need to make sure you're doing what God wants you. You can't control everything around you. And that's something you have to understand. You cannot control the chaos that is happening around you, but the person who is in control is God. And if we listen to what he wants us to do, it's all going to work out. So again, what time I am afraid, I will trust in you. And if you ever come across a time where you're feeling fear, 
where you're scared, you can say that verse to yourself. Say, what time I am afraid, I will trust in you. Whether it be <clears throat> you're alone at night and you're scared, whether it be you're scared of a situation coming into your life, whether you're scared about the chaos that seems to be going on around us, remind yourself, what time I am afraid, I will trust in you. And if you're scared, what I want you to do right now is pray. Say, God, I'm scared. God, I don't know what's going to happen next in my life, but I am fully trusting you. You may be an adult watching with your kids right now, and you could be scared. Where is the money going to come from that I need right now when I, when I can't go to work? Well, how am I going to be able to take care of these problems in my life? What time I am afraid, I will trust in you. And right now, give your cares over to God. Give your fears over to God, and he will take care of you. So a whole bunch of times that I was the most scared in my life all happened in one single day. It was a pretty crazy day, but the way it started, I was about 13 years old. I think I had just turned 13 um, and my dad took me on a trip and oh man, we had a blast. We rented these, uh, this motorcycle that we were riding on. Absolutely had a, so much fun. We were riding up into the mountains and there was this waterfall we wanted to go see and you had to like, walk up the creek bed to get to it. We had to park the motorcycles at the bottom of the hill. It was, it was a blast. I mean, there, there was so many fun things to do. We got to go swimming underneath a waterfall, which, I mean, unless you've done it, like it is so much fun. It's pretty cool. It is, have you done that? It is absolutely, oh, it is absolutely amazing. There was a log underneath that waterfall that we'd climb up onto and play like king of the log with the waterfall crashing down on you. I mean, it was amazing. Um, but the next day, we decided, you know, hey, it was a ton of fun yesterday and it rained last night. I mean, it didn't just sprinkle, it poured. So in Cambodia, it doesn't just rain little, like it monsoons. And I've never seen rain here like it does there. And these monsoons, it's like God just pouring a bucket of rain right out of the sky. It, it's insane. So it just rained like that the night before. But, and we knew it was, the roads were gonna be a little bit trickier, creeks were gonna be a little deeper, but we were up to the challenge. So my dad and I, we got on the motorcycle, there was another kid named Stevie who was going up there with us. We got on our motorcycles, we start driving, and the roads are pretty bad. As we drive up the mountain, there's like water just flowing straight down at us, but we got through it anyways. In fact, on that, the way up there, uh, my dad, I think, broke his toe because you could not see the ground at all because of the water. We're going up, he puts his foot down, Ooh, I mean, it, it was bad. So we're, we're going up though, we get to the spot where we have to park the motorcycles, we start walking, we walk over to this, this little creek that we had to walk up the day before. There in front of us was just raging, rapiding water. And it was actually, I would discover very soon, deeper than I was able to reach in. It, it, it was crazy. And yesterday it had just been this little creek. So we're standing there trying to decide what we're gonna do, but of course, we're guys, we didn't have any girls there with us, so we're not gonna turn back. I mean, we're not gonna go back to the hotel. No, we're gonna make, find a way to get up this waterfall. I mean, if this creek is raging like this, how epic is this waterfall gonna look when we get to it? So we're like, we're gonna find a way to do this. And so we came up with a plan and we started crossing this water. We, we threw a rope across the water. There was a log on the other side. Stevie was managed to be able to get around there. We pulled the rope tight and we start crossing this river. I was holding onto the rope. I'm 13 years old. I'm not a strong, early man like I am now. You know, oh, I wasn't. No doubt. I was crossing this, uh, this, this river, holding onto this rope, and about halfway through, my hands started to slip. I thought I, thought I was a gone. And that was one of, the, one of the scariest moments of my life. And throughout this day, some of the scariest moments I've ever experienced in my life all happened. But if you want to hear about them, you're going to have to tune in next time and hear what happened to my dad and I on this trip. We had a good time today talking about oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I now, I did win the challenge. You, know, you won. Correct? You won. And wait, I wait, what I, I still want to go back and look that up because Pete, what, what was it? Pediophobia? Yeah, it was obvious. I, I still am not convinced. Well, yes, Mr. Koblenz won, Mr. C won. It was three to two. It was close. Yeah. It was close. You, you almost had me nervous. Yeah. But you had it this time. And uh, next time, it's definitely going to be me. I'm going to win the challenge. I, uh, 
Uh, I think you guys will be excited about what our challenges are coming up. But uh, until then, we'll see you next time.